The female gonads are known as the ovaries, and inside the ovaries, an important process known as oogenesis takes place. Now, oogenesis is the process by which these special stem cells found inside female individuals, known as oogonium or oogonia, if we're talking about many cells, basically differentiate and eventually develop into the female gametes, the female sex cells, known as egg cells or ovum. Now, an ovum is a single egg cell, but an ova means many egg cells. So the major difference between male individuals and female individuals is that in female individuals, all the primary oocytes are formed before that individual is actually born. They are formed during fetal development. So all these stem cells we call oogonia inside our developing fetus basically differentiate into the primary oocyte and this happens before the birth of that female individual. So once that female individual is born, all these stem cells have become the primary oocytes and these primary oocytes are frozen, they remain in prophase one of meiosis until puberty is reached. And when that female individual reaches puberty, she begins the process known as the menstrual, uh, menstrual cycle. And what the menstrual cycle describes is it describes the process by which the primary oocyte eventually develops into that egg cell, that single ovum that can be fertilized by the sperm cell to produce the zygote. So when the female reaches puberty, a cycle begins known as the menstrual cycle in which one primary oocyte will eventually undergo meiosis one to produce a secondary oocyte which will remain frozen in metaphase two of meiosis until the process of fertilization. And during fertilization, meiosis two will be completed and our mature ovum, the egg cell, will be formed. So to see exactly what we mean by that, let's take a look at the following diagram. So this diagram describes a cross section of the ovaries. So this is one of the ovaries of that female individual that has reached puberty. So let's suppose this is the ovary, this is our attachment point to the uterus, and this is our fallopian tube, which acts as a passageway to carry that uh, oocyte, that ovum, from the ovary into the uterus. And if fertilization takes place, we form the zygote when the sperm cell combines with the ovum, and that zygote is implanted onto the wall, onto the lining of the uterus, known as the endometrium. Metrium. So let's focus in on this ovary. Inside the ovary, we have these blood vessels, the arteries that carry nutrients and oxygen to the cells of the ovary, and we have the veins, the blue vessels that carry away the waste products and carbon dioxide and ammonium away from the cells of the ovary. Now let's focus in on the following pathway that basically describes the maturation, the development of that primary oocyte into the that ovum. So because we're assuming this female individual has been born, that means all these oocytes are now primary oocytes, all the oogonia differentiated into primary oocytes. Now these oocytes, the primary oocytes, do not exist as individual cells. Instead, these oocytes are found inside these fluid-filled structures known as ovarian follicles. So an ovarian follicle is the fluid-filled structure found inside the ovary that contains not only that developing oocyte, but it also contains important cells, other different types of cells that also assist in the process of oogenesis. And we'll discuss what these other cells are in just a moment. So we have the primary follicle that contains the diploid primary oocyte. And the primary follicle during the process, during the menstrual cycle, will eventually develop into the secondary follicle. And the secondary follicle is much larger because it contains much more fluid, it contains many, uh, many more cells, and it also contains the secondary oocyte. So the primary follicle contains the primary oocyte, which is a diploid cell, and then we have the secondary follicle that contains the secondary oocyte 
oocyte, which is a haploid cell. So primary oocyte undergoes meiosis one to produce the secondary oocyte as well as another cell known as a polar body. And this is the first polar body that is formed. Now the secondary oocyte contains the majority of the cytoplasm that came from the primary oocyte. But the polar body only obtained a very small amount of that cytoplasm. In fact, the polar body will essentially degenerate and the body will recycle this polar body and use its contents for other things. So basically the polar body doesn't actually develop into anything useful. It's the secondary oocyte that develops into that X cell. So we have a haploid secondary oocyte found inside that secondary follicle. Now let's actually focus on the structure of that secondary follicle and let's take a look at the following diagram. So we have the secondary ovarian follicle as shown. Now notice the actual secondary oocyte is found in the following region. It's actually a small component of this entire follicle because around that cell we have other components. We have these green cells which are known as granulosa cells and we have these orange cells known as the theca cells and we also have this fluid found inside. Now what exactly is the function of the granulosa cells and our theca cells? Well it turns out that the theca cells are stimulated by a hormone produced in our body known as the luteinizing hormone LH. And what the luteinizing hormone does is it stimulates the theca cells to basically transform cholesterol into androgens. And then these androgens are released into the granulosa cells and the follicle stimulating hormone also produced inside our body stimulates these granulosa cells, the green cells, to transform androgen by using a special type of enzyme into a type of sex steroid hormone known as estrogen. And we have different types of estrogen. Now, what exactly is the function? What's the purpose of estrogen? Well, what estrogen basically does is it thickens, it increases the layer of the wall of the uterus, it increases the size of the endometrium, and it prepares the endometrium for implantation by the zygote if fertilization actually takes place. So what that means is if that egg cell fuses with the sperm, eventually the zygote that is formed will make its way into the uterus and it will implant itself into that endometrium. And what what estrogen does is it ensures that the endometrium is just the right layer, is just the right thickness. So basically we have this secondary follicle and eventually what happens to our secondary follicle is it approaches this side of the membrane of the ovary and it ruptures. It essentially ruptures releasing that secondary oocyte into this area which eventually uh, this area is known as the peritoneal canal or the peritoneal cavity and then from the peritoneal cavity that secondary oocyte goes directly into into that fallopian tube. And now the secondary oocyte, which by the way is still in metaphase 2 of meiosis, will begin to travel along our fallopian tube. Now notice that the remaining cells that uh, came from the secondary follicle remain in our ovary. And the remaining portion of that secondary follicle will eventually develop into a structure known as the corpus luteum. And the corpus the corpus luteum is essentially an endocrine gland that continues to release different types of hormones that are responsible for maintaining the thickening, the, the, th the, uh, the thick layer of that endometrium inside the uterus. And this is in the case that when the sperm cell fuses with the egg cell, we form the zygote and the zygote eventually implants onto the uterus. Now, if there is a sperm cell found inside our fallopian tube, it basically combines, it fuses with our secondary oocyte. And as soon as the interaction between the sperm cell and the secondary oocyte takes place, as soon as contact takes place, our metaphase, our secondary oocyte in metaphase 2 of meiosis will finish meiosis 2. 
and it will form the mature ovum, the mature egg cell. And at that point, the membrane of the two cells fuses, the nuclei essentially fuse, and the diploid number of that organism is restored. So the sperm cell contains a haploid number, 23 chromosomes that came from the male parent, and the egg cell contains a haploid number, 23 chromosomes that came from the female parent. And so once they fuse, the nuclei fuse as well, so 23 plus 23 and we form a diploid number 46 chromosomes so this is an important point to remember that our X cell actually remains in metaphase 2 until the fusion of the sperm cell and that X cell takes place and only during fertilization does our X cell finish meiosis and only then do we actually form that mature ovum, that mature X cell. And when fusion takes place, fertilization takes place, we form the zygote and the zygote eventually travels into the uterus and it implants itself onto the endometrium, the wall lining of that uterus, and then the embryological development process initiates.